So it looks like we're looking for another move soon, if uh, the rumor mills are to be believed, and the rumor mills are coming from another other than uh, Sir Donald J. Trump. And let's let's just let's just listen in here. Um, on Kuwait, so the ambassador to the Kuwaiti ambassador to Austria this week told the IAEA that. The Kuwaiti government is very concerned over Iran's constant breaching of the JCPOA. In your discussions with the Kuwaitis today, have you discussed where they stand this week as we go into the UN, as the United States tries to uh, extend sanctions on Iran? Well, they just left my office, as you know, the Oval Office, and we had a very good meeting with the Emir. And uh, I think we understand each other very well. They're, uh, he does think that. Uh, we're excited about a lot of things that are happening <clears throat> in the Middle East. They, they are so excited that we signed the first two countries, and I think they'll end up uh, fairly quickly being a part of it. I have, I would say, seven or eight countries that want to be a part of it without even working uh, very easily, very quickly. Nobody thought this would happen, and, and not only is it happening, it's happening rather easily. We discussed that very briefly, because that's, that's an easy one. But <clears throat> not, very that that's, an easy one. that's an easy one. A beautiful puzzle that's coming together very beautiful nicely. Puzzle. Uh, but we are uh, talking to them and others about various aspects of the Middle East. The Middle very East good. is straightening out with all that's happening. You know, we've brought a lot of our troops back. Uh, a lot of them are coming back in the very near future. Uh, we're out of Syria, other than we kept the oil. I kept the oil. And uh, we have troops guarding the oil. Other than that, we're out of Syria. We took them off the border between Syria and Turkey. We had a lot of troops on the border. Just want to put this Ultimately, up Ultimately, we got it down to 50, and I thought they were in great danger just when you have two armies sitting there looking to fight. There you go. And you just, have 50 people in the middle. Just to keep things in perspective. Who uh, you are, even if the, you're the U.S., those 50 people are in great danger. We took them out. But we had a lot of troops on the border, and we took them out. I said, look, they've been fighting on their border for... <clears throat> 200 years and a lot longer than that under different names and they can continue to do that that's not for us we're guarding our own borders we're doing very well on our southern border as an example so we're out of syria except we kept the oil and we'll make a determination we'll probably be dealing with the very Kurds nice. and the oil and see what it all ends up but we'll be out and uh, very importantly uh we're I down to very few soldiers in iraq <laughs> and uh we're down We'll be down very shortly over the next couple of weeks to the Kurds. four thousand, less than right four thousand in Afghanistan, <clears throat> and uh, then we'll make that final determination a little bit later on. We're dealing very well with the Taliban; they're very tough, they're very smart, they're very sharp. But you know, it's been 19 years, and even they are tired of fighting. You know, We're all tired, and we really We're serve as a police force because if we wanted to do what we had to do, we would have fought a lot differently than they have over the 19 years. They didn't fight it properly. They were, they were uh, police, okay? They're not police, they're, they're uh, soldiers. So there's a difference, the police. Well, he's right no about that. What's it. weird is these police, <clears throat> they were sent over to soldier and they were basically given pol uh, policing parameters to operate with it. And then a lot of these soldiers, they came over and they became police. We're police than I do, but they have to do their own policing. So we're having some very good discussions with the Taliban, as you probably heard. It's been public. Yeah. And uh, but we'll be down to very shortly. He's we'll a be pragmatic down to man. Less than four thousand soldiers. A lot of soldiers. ways. And uh, so we'll be out of there. Ruthlessly knowing pragmatic. Knowing that uh, certain things have to happen certain things have to be fulfilled but 19 years is a long time 8,000 miles away 19 years is a long time isn't he right and, right uh, about that the Middle East the whole Middle East well, subjectively uh, speaking. equation if you look at mm -hmm. what's happened if you've looked at the stupidity of decisions that were made including the deal that was made I mean take a look at what happened with Iran, had that deal stayed, had I not broken that deal, you could have never done the deal that I'm doing now, where all the countries are pouring in. And I had two calls this morning with countries that want to know, when can we go into the deal? They want to go. It's not that we're giving anything. They want security. They want peace. And they're really... Yeah. <laughs> What's really happening is uh, after the whole round of Arab Springs, 
all the uh, families that own these countries, what they came to conclude was, yo, bruh, yo, bruh, yo, listen, man, we got to dial it back. Without, well, you listen, we got to have, we got to have a kinder, gentler Islam. We can't, no, man, no, man, no, 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 man, we got to make some money, like in-house. We got to make money in-house. We keep feeding that crap. We're going to be the next ones that end up with their heads on a pike outside the castle. So let's not, uh, let's not keep feeding that beast. This is a pragmatic decision. This, well, a lot of these uh, nation states, they're, uh, they've gotten to a point in their development, really, where this uh, feeding of uh, constant willingness to destroy the structures around you is no longer useful to the uh, entities that once fed you it's like kind of what's going on in america so in a, in a well america is a is a significantly so far kinder gentler microcosmic uh version of what what has been playing out uh, in these lands for for really centuries well in most of our lands really even in america various times these stories are being <coughs> played out through centuries these constant reliance on uh the destruction uh horde as your uh, fundamental tool of political power throughout the ages people have chosen the destruction hordes and and these folks have basically said listen it's time to stop feeding the destruction hordes and that includes normalizing relations with israel i tell you one of the significant reasons why they're normalizing relations with israel because iran is a serious significant uh <coughs> social cultural geopolitical military power and turkey is is the same and and both of these powers are fundamentally relying on on the very fascistic versions of Islam as the source of their power. And in, in other words, they're relying on destruction mobs as their fundamental source of power. And these folks are looking to, uh, to cut into that uh, draw of power that these nation states have. And what better way to do what 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 wow let I me mean, right for the jugular you normalize relations with Israel and you're sending a powerful signal everywhere you're gonna have ripples throughout your country and you probably have about five six years of turmoil uh, but I think the bet is after about five six years or so this is gonna become normalized throughout your lands especially if you actually bring jobs quality jobs quality education quality development to uh to 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 your people then they're it's going to be normalized and this political power that the particular types of uh vehicles of power that the iranian mullahs rely on or erdogan relies on they would be cutting them off at the root. I mean, in a lot of ways, Erdogan and Iran, they rely on recruit. Well, they actually, not even a lot of ways, in, in most ways. It's, it's not that Iran is sending out a bunch of Iranians. Iran is funding a bunch of folks from across the region that they can easily recruit thanks to this prevailing mindset, these prevailing vehicles of power, the more fascistic versions of Islam. Uh, just as we've had more fascistic versions of Christianity throughout the ages, and we'll probably always have fascistic versions of uh, everything. And I'm using fascistic as an adjectival, just kind of totalitarian boot on the neck kind of way. I don't mean it in the, in the you know, the political science actual maybe definition of what actual fascism is. I mean fascistic, and not as in actual fascism. So... There you go. I don't know if I want to add anything more to it, but it's uh, Trump is saying that uh, he thinks that, uh, oh, I didn't put my little map here. There's where we're talking about. So we're talking about Kuwait. Kuwait is right here. Remember Kuwait as the, uh, the excuse that we use to uh, go into Iraq and really all things being equal. Uh, Iraq was way better off under Saddam Hussein. 
in every objective measurable term certainly as as far as if in every well we have some fundamental areas that we identify as quality of life and that's i guess we could say the quality of life that we're identifying these factors they're they're overwhelming majority aggregates of of human preference uh that we recognize so in terms of quality of life opportunity security just all kinds of ways Saddam Hussein was way better than anything that Iraq has has experienced uh, since uh, the United States bombed it. You know, I I love my country. I'm uh, I don't believe in being proud of history. Uh, if you were part, if you identify in some aggregate way with some historical humanity, I don't believe in taking pride or shame. I don't take pride or shame in history and whatever part me and my well other than my direct action but other than that uh so so but i do i find i am i consider myself highly fortunate to be uh in america so from that perspective i am i'm loyal to the united states of america even as i recognize what happened in iraq was just uh something that we're going to have to probably pay the Iraqis for in some way shape or form and that I I mean I don't want to give a bunch of money to a bunch of uh, ruthless killers that are in Iraq now but if there was a way to find the consensual minded in Iraq then to give back to Iraq I think at some point it's something that we're going to have to do because what we did to Iraq is is absolutely and now that part I actually can take some responsibility for because I supported it I cheered it on and uh, I was a young I was a young man at the time that had no real understanding of the connection to the world around me in any time of any type of long-term sense of accountability and everything was just drama and I just I went through so many years where the news was so freaking boring you don't understand what it was like in 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 the 80s and the especially that the, the mid to late 80s and then 1992 when you first hear about the, the first uh, the, the, the Gulf storm dudes that was exciting that was that was exhilarating I loved it. I'm I'm not going to lie to you. It was uh, watching those bombs rain down on Baghdad. If I were to watch that today, my heart would be breaking. Because I would be feeling the sense of what it would mean to live in a community connected to everyone for years on end. And uh, it would be painful to watch. So... So anyway, I'll, I'm, I'll leave it at that. It looks like uh, we're going to have uh, Kuwait next in line as far as the normalizations. And you're going to, you're, you're basic, what you're really seeing is a shift in alliance. And Israel is part of this new alliance. There's a, there's a, oh, by the way, I should mention that there is a pipeline. There is a gas pipeline that's uh, factoring in. And Israel is connected to Greece. And it gets really interesting because Greece is also very well connected to Russia. I, I'm, I got more stories, I guess, but keep listening. I'll just tell you this in my humble opinion. If Russia and the United States were open allies, there would be peace in the world for another 30 years. That's my theory, and uh, I believe that a lot of neocons and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, war, war profiteers are fully aware of that fact. Well, not fact. I'm sorry. That if, if if I'm right in my theory, if that would be a fact. But there you go. That's it. I got nothing.